humanity comes back to the issue of social system. And I think that capitalism, again, is one part of that. And we have to think back to issues like the power structure, the political structure, the legal structure. Uh, there, there are a lot of questions which need to be answered in terms of allowing people to engage and participate in our economic system relative to what we do today. It is fair to say that a large part of the world uh, do not get to participate the way that we in the advanced economies do. I think that there is something uh, deeply flawed about this. Also within the advanced economies, people don't, uh, can't engage either. Now, is it possible that we get to this brighter system? I think that social and digital technology, as well as being part of the problem, also offer part of the solution. Why do I think that? Because the way that we incorporate people and include people is through networks. Digital technology creates the greatest opportunity for these networks to spread across the world at almost zero cost. It's difficult to imagine, but there is no reason why we can't have a much more inclusive system than we have at the moment. But as we look around the world, the power structures are still very much as they were at the end of the Second World War. We're all going to have to consider, do we want to try and hold on to those? Or are we going to really one day have to face the inevitable calls to have a more egalitarian and inclusive way um, uh, of sharing the power, which I think is what will ensure the continuity and the best things about capitalism uh, which are going to spread, hopefully, the resources and some of the solutions to the big problems we face, like climate change, uh, uh, to much um, uh, broader number of people, uh, but also bring out some of the great aspects, which is allowing people the freedom to live their lives to the full, which must be what economic and social systems are really there for.